Welcome to the Grow Your Law Firm podcast, brought to you by Pilma. This podcast helps lead lawyers to more growth, profit, and freedom. Here is your legal marketing expert and host, Ken Hardison. Well, hello, everyone. This is Ken Hardison, and welcome to another episode of Grow Your Law Firm. And today we have the privilege and honor of having Christy Jane of Christy Jane Agency joining us today. Thank you, Christy. Thanks for having me, Ken. I'm a huge fan of you guys. Well, thank you. So we're going to talk today about online marketing and different things. I'm going to, I'm going to pick your brain a little bit. Yeah. But before we get started, I, I want you to tell people your background. Like where you, I mean, I know you own Christy Jane Agency now. Yeah. Tell us kind of what that does. But tell us how you got to that. I mean, what's your background and in, in training? Yeah, so um, I am the CEO and founder of Christy Jane, the internet marketing agency. And a little bit of background about me, which I think is kind of important because it helps to give context in my approach to things, um, is that I was born in the Midwest. I'm from a big family. And the first thing I learned is uh, to work hard and take pride in your work. So I'm very, I'm very focused on making sure I'm creating a product I can be really proud of. Um, so I spent the first 18 years of my career as a research analyst. So I'm kind of a data geek, which is fun. Um, I also was a writer and a trainer. So, um, and I was the chief editor of a. Um, an internet marketing trade magazine, Search Engine News, and it was a leading trade magazine of the industry um, for well over 10 years, and I spent my time teaching. So I was teaching uh, business owners enough about internet marketing to know whether or not they're going to get, they're getting ripped off by their agency, which is a big problem. And the other part of my uh, time, I spent training professionals or marketing agencies how to get their clients ahead of the competition. So, um, about two years ago, I recruited the best uh, experts in the industry and launched Christy Jane. And uh, the approach we like to take is we call ourselves a holistic marketing agency, which is kind of a weird name. But uh, what that means is it doesn't mean that we do everything for our clients. It means that we audit all of the marketing dollars that you're spending to be sure that you're getting value for your money. Um and if you're working with great companies, we're the best team player there is. And if you're working with companies that are ripping you off, we're going to tell you straight out that this is not, you're not getting value for your money. Um, so that's kind of our approach with things so far. Uh, we've been working. So how did I meet Ken? That's something I'd like to say really quick. Yeah. I met Ken. Um, I was introduced to Ken by Patrick Anderson. Um, I met Patrick uh, really early in my career, actually, because he was such an incredible marketer. And so he and I collaborated on a lot of stuff. And we were always, you know, we went back and forth brainstorming and talking about different approaches, you know, because internet marketing is all about testing new things and um, staying on the cutting edge. So that's how I met Ken. And also how I got introduced to uh, personal injury, which is unlike any other industry I've ever seen in my career. You guys have got your work cut out of for you. And I could go into all the details about how you guys are so much different, but you can, you can invite me back another time for that part of it. But one of the things I did, I have noticed working with, with, uh, personal injury attorneys, um, is that you guys, um, first of all, there's two things and you probably don't want to hear it. People listening to this don't want to hear it. First of all is there's no magic bullet. There's no secret sauce. I don't have something, but you know, I'm only sharing with my clients. It takes hard work, right? And that's, that's no fun. Um, the other thing is, and there's exceptions to this rule, so don't crucify me. But most of the time, what I've found is that personal injury attorneys are being ripped off by their marketing agencies. And I mean that in the nicest way of maybe they're not intentionally being ripped off, but they're all their their marketing agency isn't stay, doing the hard work that it takes. Um, the two I think there's two reasons why that is. Either the marketing agency is you know they got recruited by some fast talking marketer who doesn't do the hard work, and then they're stuck in a um, a contract they can't get out of, and they're being shown data they don't understand, or it's an incredible marketing agency that grew too big. And then now too you're fast. Too fast. Yeah. 
yeah, they've grown way too big, way too fast. And then you're being delegated to some junior uh, market or, you know, junior project manager and being shown data you don't understand and you're just not a priority. So, but I will share with you later after we answer some questions, two quick ways to check the quality of your website. So I'll sure. share that with you guys. And I did share some, some resource links that uh, you'll be able to share with the rest of your, with your group that go with this conversation. Great, great, great. So, you know, I run masterminds with Pilma uh, and a personal injury lawyers market management association. And and here's what we're, we're starting. I mean, you're right. It's very frustrating. And mm -hmm. and they say the same things, you know, they'll get with somebody that's really seems to be good and doing a good job. And then they get, because everybody knows they're good and all the other lawyers go hire them and they grow and they, they go from like 20 people to like 150, 200 yeah. people. And they just, it's just, they can't keep the same quality because it's, you know, it gets too yeah. complex for them. Well, it, yeah. I mean, it comes down to your business model, right? So um, I do not take on clients who compete with each other. I refuse because I'm not going to compete against myself. I'm going to give my clients every advantage I can. And then it becomes a conflict of interest if I already have a client in, say, that state. So right. I won't do it. So like Mark Schumann of Schumann Legal, I've worked with him for over two years. Um, and now instead of a marketing problem, he has a lead problem because he's got so many leads. He's trying to figure out the best way to handle them so he doesn't lose any, you know, those that potential million dollar lead. Um, and he's happy to tell anybody anytime who wants to talk to me um, about how good I am because he knows he's not going to create a competitor because right. we don't want to get big. We just want to have just enough clients to do quality work that we love and work with, a, you know, firms that we like. Right. Well, that's, yeah. that's, that's, that's my definition of success, doing what you want to do with whom you want to do it with. Exactly. When, when you want to do it. So who does do you? So. <laughs> But we've been talking, and, 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 and I'll be honest with you, a lot of the lawyers now are thinking, I just, you know, especially in big cities like L.A., Chicago, yeah. New York, where the competition is just on two things, PPC and SEO, is just ridiculous. Yeah. And they're almost saying, you know, I, I just think I'm going to do LSAs. I'm just going to quit paying this, you know, five, ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 a month for SEO uh, because I just don't think it works anymore. What, what do you say to that? So um, internet marketing is an ecosystem, right? Google is an ecosystem. Everything works together. So uh, if you have a really authoritative website, um, and then you've got your Google Maps, you've got your local service ads, um, you have your organic, and you have your pay-per-click, right? Um, the authority of all of them lifts up each one of them. So um, I think that it's still really effective, all of those pieces. Um, it just really depends on your individual situation. So what I've seen is that people are not leveraging the website that the way that they should, and they're using it instead as like a online business card almost. But what they don't understand is if you take your website and you position it as a like an authority and you're an expert in your field, Google will see that. And then they will start sending you leads. So like, for example, I have a client who says, hey, Christy, um, I'm not getting any workers comp leads. And I said, okay, well, let me look. Well, he doesn't have any reference on his website, no authoritative content, nothing on there that says he's an authority in workers comp. And so obviously that's why he's not getting his worker, workers comp leads. So we build up his authority on his website. And then immediately what you see, probably about 30 days later, you'll see on Google Maps, um, first of all, he'll start getting more leads through his Google business profile, that Google Maps profile for workers' comp, because Google can see, hey, organically, he's grown a lot in workers' comp. This guy really does take workers' comp leads. And one of the ways you can check is on your Google uh, business profile. There's all of the services that you offer, right? You put them all in there. Well, if you're doing a good job, what happens is you go and check and Google actually recommends a list of services that you don't have in there based on the authority of your website and saying, hey, you don't have all these workers comp services listed. Should we add them? And you're like, oh, yes, let's add them. So it really is an, a, like a, an ecosystem. So it's important to do all the things. Cool. And so, that doesn't mean necessarily overspend on pay-per-click or anything else. The goal long-term is that Google sees you as such an expert in your industry, in your area, 
that you can they get more leads getting pushed to you organically from your content or organically from your Google Maps and then you can start to reduce your pay-per-click spend so how do you get this authority that do you just do you just you know I, I know some and we're going to get to some more of this but is it just mm -hmm. about putting up more content more content or is it or, no is there, please okay. please stop putting up so much crap content you guys you're amazing stop it it's not the way it works it takes a expert uh in content creation and um, pr um and link building uh and even the way that you structure your website so you need to have an authoritative website that's fast that's optimized for conversions right first and foremost on mobile devices and then you need to create quality content targeting the way that people are searching for you and then you need to do um really precise um, and high authority link building uh so what happens is then it lifts all of your stuff up there's a huge there's all all the stuff that can go into it and we can get dig, we can dig deeper into this in another uh another time um because i love to teach um but basically you go through this process um and it lifts up the authority of whatever that is that topic that you're focused on uh it is not about just more content more content more content no okay but good quality relevant content which means you've got to go to where like simrush or or where do you go to find out what people are searching for um yeah um there's a lot of different tools right it's kind of the tools that you feel most comfortable using they've got like word tracker they got uh semrush they have a refs um it kind of just depends on specifically what it is that how which tool you like to use but i want to say too when i'm talking about the quality of the content we can get a client we can get leads flowing in to a client in downtown chicago for their uh their practice area that they're looking for with maybe six pieces of content it's not about the quantity and actually by publishing a bunch of con a bunch of content that's low quality you're actually hurting your website because google uh judges your website as a whole the whole thing and if you i would much rather have my clients have like a hundred fast effective sexy pages than a thousand clunky pages it just it's not good so it really is about streamlining and uh, making sure you're answering people's questions and really optimizing it for the search and then you can use things with like call tracking where you can watch your calls come in and you can see their sources um specifically if it's organic search and what their landing page was so you can prove that those blog posts and those pages that you're building up an authority are actually where the clients are coming through so organic not pay-per-click or google maps so is blogging still should you still be blogging i think that content creation is really really critical high quality content creation okay but don't blog every day just to blog if you think more is better absolutely not and if someone's telling you that no I mean the first thing I do when I get a hold of a website is do a content prune or content audit I look at all of the pages on their site and I sometimes just cut it in half I delete and you know what just that will show Google hey they don't have all this crap anymore they're making changes and then you'll start to see your stats already going up just by pruning content and that's an old strategy that they proved time and time again works and so. you you said something earlier you know you got to have you know great authoritative authoritative content but you also said good authoritative backlinks yes and, and, and so my question to you is you know you know this thing changes I, I always say internet marketing changes like uh like it's like trying to paint a train I mean it's just <laughs> that's you know, great yeah you know, yeah and I've spent my whole career in it too yeah it yeah. changes so fast yeah it, it so I remember when you had the link forms and it was like you know give me 10 200 million you know back links and they said no we'll do with that now we just want the really quality ones yeah but then lawyers were going out and going to high schools and giving scholarships and getting yeah. dot getting back that worked for a little while yeah dot edus and then dot yeah. orgs and things like that 
So does that still work or not? So um, the problem is you take a really good strategy and then people mass produce it and they do it bad. So do uh, scholarship pages still work? In some ways, yes, they still do. Um, but what happens is people are doing it wrong. Um, you know, they're they're promoting, they're taking what makes it effective. You are a local business and you're getting relevant, high quality links from local colleges, local sources in the thing, right? That's that's a good signal for Google. EDU, things like that is good. Also, you know, it's community based, but you are basically bringing in local links to your local business website. Now, where it went wrong is that people mass produce this process. And then there's that company that's like, oh, you want to do scholarships? We'll get you a thousand links to your scholarship page. And so instead of 10 high quality links to your scholarship stuff, you had 500 links from all over the country or world even. And then your scholarship page was like way out of whack from everything else. So say your homepage has 500 links total and your scholarship page has 2000 links. So it threw it out of whack completely. And then what people did is they put out new scholarship pages every year. And so you have this page, you built up all this authority on it, even if you were doing it the right way and say, oh, scholarship 2022. Well, and then they deleted the page and did scholarship 2023. And so now they're rebuilding the authority on this brand new page instead of having consistent historical authority on the scholarship page. So is it as effective as it once was? No. But if you're doing it the right way, it's not a bad way to you know, show an investment in your community and get um, some good links, but stay local. So that's the key because I know some lawyers I've seen like used to, you could get on this law school. I don't, I don't even know if it was Harvard or some New York. I don't even remember what it was, but I saw every lawyer had a back link to that. Yeah. You, could, you could get it for pretty much nothing. Yeah. I mean, and Google knows. So there's, they'll say, listen, they'll say links don't matter. Total crap. Google's lying. They've been saying that for a decade. Links don't matter. Links don't matter. Links matter. But high quality, very low quantity, high quality links are what, what matters. When we're doing link building for our clients, which we do um, very slowly um, and carefully, we're doing like five links a month carefully, slowly, because it looks natural, right? We're working on what a natural way to build authority for your content and then for your website. So when I say that there's no secret sauce or magic bullet or anything, there isn't. But I've worked with Schumann for a little bit over two years now. He's had a lead problem for almost a year now. Like he's, and we had to switch gears. So when we're holistic, that means that we're helping you be successful across the board. So, you know, we got him so many leads and there was, he's like, I need more leads. And I'm like, what are you doing with all these? Well, I've audited the system and realized that it, they weren't catching everything, you know? So then we started to look at technology solutions to help his team have a good uh, CRM for lead management. And then we, we have a really talented recruiter on our team. Um, we had a recruiter go in and help him hire A plus players, you know, to be part of that. So it was, he wanted to have his business grow, um, but it's hard, you know, you can't be an expert in all things, you know? Yes. So, yeah, we're talking about, so what, you, what, what are quality backlinks? Is it just because of their authority? Go look at see what the authority of their website is and say, I want to get, and it's local, I want to get a backlink and then figure out some strategy to do it. Oh, man, yeah. If you can do a high quality local link, right, local to your area, anywhere in your state or your city or anything like that, that's good. Um, but it doesn't have to be local. It has to be specific to your industry. Um, I think PR link building is really a, a smart way to go for attorneys. So if you have any kind of high quality, you know, reporters or like article, you know, the Wall Street Journal, the any of those guys, um, you know, buzzworthy, all of those online um, news outlets, they're always looking for a legal expert to answer questions specifically to whatever their article is. And there's ways to get in touch with those, those um, writers yeah. and then put your clients first or put yourself as a firm, as an attorney and say, hey, if you have anything that has to do with any of these law topics, 
email me and I will answer your questions and you can quote me and give me a link back. Isn't there a website called, uh, I think it's H A R O. Yeah. Harlow, Harrow, yeah. Dot, help a reporter dot, out. Yeah. Dot com or dot org. Dot com. Yeah. It's help a reporter out. That's a good thing too. It's, it's a lot of noise though. You have to be really careful because if you sign up for that, you get this giant email digest like every day that you have to go through. Now that's not a bad thing to like say, if you have a, a marketing manager or somebody in house, you can sign up for those. And then you basically, you pick your specific topics that you're ready to be supportive in, and then you can create relationships. So that's one of the ways that, you know, we help our clients do, do link building. Yeah. So how about like Huffington Post? I mean, there's some of these things where you pay to play, right? Where you yeah. pay to get your article published or something. Yeah, you know, you have to be really careful. You have to stay in your industry. So if it's an article about, you know, uh, understanding what kind of car insurance you need to protect yourself in case of a, you know, a accident, uh, uninsured motorist, uh, underinsured motorist, explaining things like that. That's on topic for you guys. Understanding do I have a case, you know, if I have a slip and fall, what, what kind of criteria do I need to look at? Things like that, that people have, you know, dangerous ice situations in winter topics that fall in your guys's, uh, wheel of expertise. That's where you want to stick to. So it has to be on topic. Um, so you can't have like a mommy blog who decides one day they're going to write about some law topic and then get a link from it. That's not going to do you any good, but you know, it's in that side of things is a you know an expertise in itself right and i have someone on my team who that's what his focus is um he is the head of our seo department and he focuses on pr and link building and he's very very talented so so like if you got a local uh like a statewide like we got most of our members most lawyers are a member of like the uh American Association of Justice. Yeah. In North Carolina, we have the North Carolina Association of Justice. You've mm -hmm. got the National Trial Lawyers. You know, so you got all these organizations. And they're all darn orgs, and I would think that they get a lot of traffic. So I think I would think they probably have some authority. If you could get published in those, does that help or not really? Well, so being part of those association help, uh, the associations does help you. Um, but there's a lot of noise and there's a lot of links coming out. So if you're one of a hundred links on a page or a hundred links on a topic, it's no good. You're not going to get anything out of it. But what they do help with is um, trust signals and authority signals. So they give you those badges. Those badges are like gold for users. They land on your page. They look around. They look for, you know, your review count. They look, oh, expertise, badge, badge, badge. Like this guy, is, this firm's really great. And then they they take the action. So it's that user behavior, that psychology when they come to their site and they think, yeah, this, this, this firm really has a lot of expertise. I feel comfortable. So that's where those badges are really important. And going back to content, and this is something uh, that I, I'm just... Uh, astounded by is this new uh what do you call it chat gp yeah you're talking GBT. about the ai chat bot aren't you AI, AI, ai chat gbt and then yep, the, yep. the dolly the, the D A L L E, where one of them just creates i mean can you explain what it is and then okay kind of give your views on it because you know I, 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 when i when i saw this this came back in november i started doing all the research i could and I'd see some people say, oh, you know, you don't want to do it. You know, it's not going to, you know, Google, pick it up, whatever, kick it out. It's sort of like Jasper. It's not going to be no yeah. good. And then, and then I heard other guys say, hey, no, listen, you can get there and you can paraphrase it with something, you know, like Quillbot or something like that. Or you can go in and have a editor and, and you know, it'll really do it. But that's just if you want to create a hell of a lot of content. And yeah, just and me again, you, don't do you, it. Yeah, that's what you just told me. We don't want to do but that. There is a place for AI generated content. There really is. Um, my team leverages it in some situations. Um, we work with more than just personal injury. We work with different industries as well. We have a small client base, um, but we like to make sure that we're diversifying our clients because there's a lot of different things that different industries are doing that you can actually use in a kind of an unorthodox way for your for your injury attorneys, right? Um, 
so so AI chat or uh, content creation works well as long as it's being used by somebody who is an expert. So um, like an SEO, somebody who understands exactly what kind of content you're creating, exactly the search result that you're targeting, the user that you're looking after, because you craft handmade human created questions or human created topics and then you can use AI to fill in the paragraphs and things like that and there's actually a really cool tool um, that I love and uh, I, I love it so much it's called WordTune and this is one of the resources that I shared with you guys um, that you'll be able to use um, and what happens I can show you guys how I use it um, but so there is a way to, to leverage AI in your content creation. Now, what you're one of the ways for personal injury, I'm just going to tangent off a second here, that it talks about AI is the new chat bots that they have coming out, right? So you've got the traditional chat, which is like, you know, engage and those guys, right? And you've got somebody chatting away um, with your user. And then they all have these new AI uh chatbots that are designed to basically evaluate a case and even get them to the point where they sign contracts, right? We've done this with one of our clients. Um, we've switched from traditional chat to the chat bot um, and have its, uh, its goal is to vet cases and then get them to basically get as close as possible to a signed case or sign the contract and go. Um, and there are different for you know, um, companies that do that for you. Now, what we've noticed is it is effective. It does work. Um, does it replace that phone call or those other things? No, but by giving your users all the options you possibly can on your website, call, text, have your case instantly evaluated, email us, all of those things, you're grabbing everybody in the different mindsets that they're at. Now, what we've noticed, um, is how user behavior changes. So with a traditional chatbot, what you get is a lot of people who are asking questions of that chat person, and a lot of them are existing clients. Hey, this is Bill. I'm just checking in to see how my case is. Can I talk to my paralegal? Blah, blah, blah. You get a big percentage of those using that traditional chat system, right? Not so many when it comes to lead generation. And really, it's just a fancy uh, you know, it's just somebody who takes a message. You basically just have a messaging system on your thing. It's not that great. I've never been a great fan of that. Now, the chat bot instead, you don't get users who are existing clients asking questions. You get people who want to know whether or not they have a case. Um, and so you have different kind of user behaviors. But, you know, it's still early in the game for me to say they're amazing. I do see them signing cases. So I'm a fan so far of the system that we've been testing. So that's the, the AI chat bots. Um, I think they're great. I think they're better than traditional chat. That's my official stance on it. Um, I can even recommend a company that I've been using. Um, now you were also mentioning, so that is the AI, the, the chat uh, AI system you were talking about. The other one you said, Dolly, um, that is a, an AI that creates original images and graphics based on your length, like typing in a sentence. It'll create an original image. Now, is that cool? Yeah. Is that going to be worth the time and energy for a personal injury attorney? No. Just walk off. It's not going to, it's not going to do anything because people aren't using image search to find an attorney most of the time. You can leverage it a little bit. So that's really not something to worry about. Now, will AI replace, like they keep saying, I've been watching this for more than 10 years. AI is going to replace everybody. It's never going to because there's too many nuances in user behavior that you have to. And people are going to, once they start to rule it with the chats and the automatic stuff, you can stand out by saying, hey, we're completely human over here. You want to talk to somebody? Call us. We don't, we're not going to drown you in AI bots and other stuff. So there's always a way in marketing to um, appeal to humans of just wanting to talk to a real person. So I don't think AI is ever going to be a deal changer for people in that regard. Okay. Yeah, because that was the first thing I was talking to my wife. And I was showing her, she said, because she, she's the copywriter for Pilma. And she's yeah. the editor of her, of, her, of her magazine. I love it. And so she's very, oh, this is this. Did you, yeah, they're going to be able to, 
that that chat uh, that things will be able to take my experience or, or not the masterminds I've been sitting in and listening to. There's no way. <laughs> right. Well, and yeah. even if they do, listen though, Ken, if these AI bots are able to take a client from interested to signed on, good for them. Yeah. Great. That's amazing because you still have to be an attorney. As soon as it, you know, it doesn't end when they sign that contract. That's when it starts. Right. That's when you have to, all this stuff has to happen. So as much as we can use technology to make, to help our team work more effectively, I am a fan all the way. If you're doing something, the same thing every day and it's repetitive, let's talk about a way to make that stop. Yeah. And they so you can be, you can take your skills, your hard earned expertise and really use it where it's most important and not on these mundane tasks. So yeah. I applaud the AI chat box. If they can get that client from, I don't know, to here's my signature, let's do it all day long because intake is busy with phone calls and other forms of lead generation. Yeah. Which brings me to my next question. Uh, you know, we, we did a study at Pilma. Uh, mm -hmm. We did a test, and, and also uh, Hennessy's done a test of how many we send. Like we, we got our people to go in, and, and we actually do this for our masterminds on a monthly basis now. Go in and fill out a couple of their uh, forms. You know, like I need help or whatever, or, or uh, I've been hurt. And surprisingly, I think Hennessy. I think our group was like twenty six percent never answered. I'm telling you. And, and, and in Hennessy's group, it was like 33%. It's so what, what is the answer for that? Because the, yeah. there would be a way to automate that, shouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So um, there are different CRMs, right? So management systems, lead management systems that you can use for intake. And what happens is you they fill out a form any of the ways that they come in. They fill out a form, and then it automatically um, sends them an email or, you know, response, like, hey, we got your form, whatever. It sends them a text like, hey, can we give you a call in a couple minutes? We just got your form. So you can have things that automated automatically do that. And when this form fill comes in, it goes into this dashboard and then it's automatically assigned to one of your intake people. And you have a certain period of time, 10 minutes, 15 minutes to do the first task on that lead, which is call them back or chase it. We call it chasing a lead. So there are systems that will help streamline that. And what I have found out is the same thing that you're saying is I'm shoving all these leads at these guys. And then they're like, are, cause what one of the metrics that we track is signed cases. If you have an average, if you're signing 30 cases a month, when you're working with us, after we get our systems and stuff in place, there's no reason that should not grow month over month. There's no reason. And if there, if it does stagnant out, where are the leads going? Because I know that those leads inc are increasing month over month. And that's how I found out the same thing you guys did is they're catching, there's, they can't catch all the leads. There's not yeah. systems in place to make sure they don't lose any. Yeah. So, you know, that's the whole holistic part, right? Is making sure they've got all the technology solutions. One of the ones that I really like is Lead Docket. Um, that's a good CRM system for, for lead management. Great, great system. Um, yeah. But yeah, so I'm I'm friends with technology because it makes everybody, you know, makes you more effective. Well, I don't know what you're seeing, but we're at Pilma personally, we have started doing way, way more videos on all our social and everything. And we're seeing just a skyrocket yeah. engagement. I mean, where we yeah. were using static ads or static posts. If for some reason, I mean, are you seeing that too? That really be, I mean, we've been talking, I've been talking about video for eight years, but I mean, it's, it's really, it's really here. I mean, it's. So yes, video is incredible. Video is powerful. Um, we have actually have a whole team that focuses on video. Uh, one thing I will say as a recommendation uh, for YouTube and things like that is to leverage YouTube shorts. So those are the short videos that are 30 seconds or less. So get a chunk of content, like even our call right now today, our, pot, our, our um, meeting today, and then chop it up into 30 second pieces and then feed that into your YouTube. And you'll see the impressions in the, in the um, video views and everything just go through the roof. So people don't really do well with long form content. They want short chunks yeah. of content. Yeah. And uh, that makes me road talk about when you're ready yeah so yeah that brings us to our next thing 
So you created this thing, what was it called Road Proof? Yeah, so I told you I recruited the best experts in the field. And uh, what we did is we're here to support our our uh, clients. And one of our clients, you know, we had this idea, we have this idea to help them um, find acts, video footage of their car accidents so they can close their cases faster. Um, and so we we uh, built and created Roadproof, which basically what it does is it captures the video footage um, on the roads um, of car accidents. Well, all the video footage. And then you can take your um, police report and use that information to search for footage for your car accident and then just download it. So instead of going through the subpoena process where you're fighting with the state and saying, hey, is there video footage of this car accident? I know that there's cameras on this road. Um, instead, you can just log into our dashboard and in about 10 minutes, you can find whether or not there's footage and then download it and use it in your cases. Yeah, and, and that's great. But then I've seen one of our mastermind members, uh, Brian Lobovic, yeah, and figured out how to use it to market his law practice. Yes, so yeah, he's yeah. he's a smart guy. Um, so he really put himself out there in the beginning of hey, we can find footage of your car accident. Um, and so he went really forward facing in his marketing with that and did some, some commercials and everything video of it. Um, and then also he's created a social media campaign. My team helped him do that part. The social media campaign, um, which leveraging the video footage that we are finding of these car accidents on social media platforms like Facebook, um, and then bringing them back to a landing page and saying, hey, maybe we can find footage of your car accident too. And what that whole campaign does is it really leans on the human behavior of wanting to watch car accidents. And so from a marketing perspective, I have never seen a more effective branding lead, you know, uh, campaign than this because um, you're getting maybe six cents. I, we were just talking about this this morning with one of our clients, six cents a click uh, from the ad on Facebook. They're watching the video all the way through on Facebook, the video ad, the landing on the page and then watching videos on the page and then filling out forms. So even if you don't get leads from this, just to be clear, even if you don't get actual car accident leads from this, people are associating you because we're teaching the people that there's actually footage of car accident you can get. A lot of people don't even know that, but they're interacting with your brand. They're watching things. They're going to your website. They're watching things. And so that is what true branding campaigns look like. And it's like, I think the spend was like, 15 bucks a day or something it's just tiny yeah i mean i think it's like it's twofold you can get it for your case if you got to go to trial or you're trying to do a mediation or you try to get your case settled but i think i think lobovic just really uh which you know he's always been that way he's always yeah. like, thinking outside of the box and yeah and, uh, yeah uh, yeah, but Roadproof is just a good system because you can, um, it's membership based and, you know, you subscribe to it. And then anyone on your team, typically your paralegal or somebody who's in that case process, once you get the case signed, uh, you get your police report, then you grab the police report information and jump onto Roadproof and just see if there's video footage. And a lot of times what we found is, you know, maybe your client got ticketed because he said, she said, this said. Um, a lot of times, like say you have a, a pile up, so to speak, um, you know, this person stops before hitting the car in front of them, they get rear ended really hard and they get shoved into all the cars and then it becomes, well, who rear ended who? Um, and so there's a lot of those cases that we've, that we've seen, but, um, we've been using road proof for clients for a year now, almost a year. Uh, and so far we haven't had anybody walk away from the system. So and but, you do it, you, you, it's not available in all states, right? No, it's not available in all states yet because, um, I mean, honestly, you personal injury attorneys are really high maintenance. So you're time consuming, <laughs> which is why we don't want a whole bunch of you. This is why we don't compete with ourselves um, for, for attorneys. Um, so we've been basically onboarding states based on the interest of for the state. So we have it available in a lot of states. Um, and I can give you that list. Let me just go to it really quick. Um, and we've got it in, I can actually share my screen if you wanted to see it. Um, 
we've got it in, let's see, California, Colorado, Florida, Georgia, Iowa, Nebraska, New Jersey, New York, South Carolina, Tennessee, and Vermont. Um, so like, let's look at Florida. Um, so this is the, right now, this is the number of cameras that we have available. I think there's about 3,000 in, in the state of Florida. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I know. If you're a Florida attorney, call us because this is ridiculous. Um, and of course, that's where Lebovic is, is in Florida. So, but each one of these icons is just talks, there's like 33 cameras here, four cameras here. And so as you zoom in more and more, you can actually get to the actual camera uh, icons in there. Let me get down there. There's so many here. Yeah, See, yeah. These are actual camera icons. Now we're getting down to it. It's going to pop back right. in. Right. Yeah. So... And then you just grab your, you basically search. This is the same system as Google Maps. And so you can use that uh, latitude, longitude for your police reports and just search for the footage. That's wild. It's super easy. Yeah. It's, it's really effective. Cool. So I'm all about using technology to save time, Ken. Well, I think, I think that's what you got to do. You got to be more yeah. uh, efficient. And, and, and one way to do that is automation, you know, I, I yeah. mean, you know, we have a theme at Pilma every year, and last year for it was data, be data driven on our marketing. Oh, always. Uh, and then th this last year, was a small automate everything we can, you know, yes. be looking for ways, not just like you said, if it's something you do over and over and over again, let's figure out something, you know, let's at least yeah. there's got to be somebody's thought about some software or something or some program where you can get a programmer to do it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and we have a full dev team. When I pulled the best in the industry to come hang out, Christy Jane with me, I picked the, one of the best dev developers I've ever seen and he leads it. So we do all kinds of different quick scripts, uh, different integrations. Um, we're happy to find things off the shelf like lead docket and make sure it integrates with your case management. We're happy to be that, that company for you. So there were two, I was going to share um, really quick before, but I was going to show you WordTune. Do you want me to show you how that works? Yes, really fast? Yes, yes. Okay. So I'll show it to you really quick. Um, okay, so this is WordTune. I gave you guys the link. Um, WordTune hangs out. It's a browser plugin. So um, it hangs out in your browser. And when you're writing in your browser, like say on an email or something like that, um, or in their editor, um, it pops up like a little, I'll show you, this little guy right here. So let's, yeah, this little thing. So I copied and pasted just a chunk from a website. And it's like, how long do you have to file your claim for a motorcycle accident in Chicago? Okay, blah, blah. Um, we keep that in there because that's important for SEO and how people are searching. But if I wanted to rewrite it, all I do is click rewrite. And what it does is it takes this first sentence and it rewrites it in a different way. So from the time of the accident, you have two years to file a lawsuit for a motorcycle accident in the state of Illinois. And here's an example, one of them in Illinois, and it changes it. So what's highlighted in purple is what's been changed. So if you go through, it just keeps going like, oh, that looked good. Um, this looks good. You know, you just sort of read. This is AI. Artificial intelligence is using this to rewrite this to be more succinct or to maybe not be... Um, you know, the exact same comp content that you have on a different page. So let's say you have 10 location pages and you have basically the same questions where you can use this word tune to kind of change up the language a little bit so you don't get uh, in trouble by Google for duplicate content. Yeah, sort of like Quillbot. Yes, like Quillbot. So I like this because it hangs out in your browser and I just think it's really easy to use. And is it, so. is it, is it free or is it cost? Uh, it's free for however many you do in a day, um, but for the as much as I use it, I think I spend like twenty dollars a month or something on it. It's nothing. Nothing. Yeah, I know it's free. Basically, the browser plugin is free, and then if you use it extensively, um, I do. But you know, you have casual and formal ways. It kind of helps too because it'll help with the grammar. So if you have somebody writing, you can say, "Hey, this isn't correct." Um, oh, I want to ask you something about before I, I forgot it. Now I remember it again. Do you do you pay attention to what grade level you're writing? Because yes, because like yeah. when I'm writing book, when I write my books that I'm trying to get consumer books, I, I, I try to write them on like a sixth to eighth grade level. Yeah. Um. So there's no 
this is what's really important, right? You get these marketing agencies and they're like, oh, I do uh, attorneys. And then they just rinse and repeat the same thing across all the country, which is a huge mistake. Because if you're talking to somebody, um, let's say in upstate New York or in New York in general, your language and your writing level is going to, grade level, is going to be completely different than if you're like in Georgia. Because you have to really look at who your audience is. And you have to say like, most of our people aren't highly educated or they are, I live in a college area and there's a lot of educated people. So you have to take your audience in mind a lot of times. So yes, you wanna, you wanna write at the, like a very simple grade level, regardless. Um, sixth grade's fine that I would probably not go any higher than that because people are normally upset, they're distraught. And if something feels complicated to them, they're gonna either do one of two things. They're either gonna leave or they're gonna be like, well, lawyers are complicated and then they're just gonna pull the trigger. But if you talk to them in a language that's easy for them to understand, then they feel more comfortable. And so you're gonna have more people actually pull the trigger and less people leave. I use, I use a, a thing called Hemingway, like Ernest Hemingway yeah. app, app app.com. Do you yeah. use anything? I love Hemingway, actually. That's a good one. Yeah. And there's a lot of tools that will do it for you. And again, it just has to do with the tool that you feel most comfortable using. Yeah, so, there is another one out there because we've had some of my masterminds say they use it. And yeah. I, I, I don't remember it because I like Hemingway app. I've just been using it for 10 years. And that's, that's what I like. You know? Yeah. I mean, you just like what you like. Exactly. So, um, okay. So there was two things I was going to share with you, two ways to check your website, right? Because I yep. said that a lot of times people are being taken advantage of. And, you know, it makes me as mad as it makes you guys. I just, I feel so, you know, angry for you guys. Um, because people see a law firm, they add a bunch of zeros and they don't deliver. It's it's really frustrating. So anyway, um, this is Google's PageSpeed tool. What it's going to do is going to tell you how fast a page loads you know, on a device, either a mobile or a desktop. Um, you always want to focus on mobile because most of your audience is mobile. I'll tell you that right now. Um, and so I'm just going to use Schumann because he's my favorite, my favorite uh, victim here. And you just hit, so you put in a page, the home page is great. Um, and then you just hit analyze. And it's going to show you the difference between mobile and desktop. And a lot of this stuff you're not going to understand, which is perfectly fine. But what you are going to understand is it's going to give you a score on mobile or desktop out of 100. So, and it's going to show you what your website looks like above the fold on a mobile device or a desktop, right? Pretty so, cool. yeah. So if you're not scoring in the 90s, you have a problem. What I have seen most of the time when I come look at this stuff, that uh, law firms are scoring like in the 30s. So the good news is... Um, your um, industry is underserved. And if you can get up there and get your stuff together, you can beat out your competition because these the bigger these firms are that I've seen that are like killing it in their area uh, because they're doing so much offline stuff. When I actually dig into their website, it's very weak. So you have a lot of room for even boutique websites to outperform bigger websites online. It's, it's actually kind of cool. Now, the other thing that you can do is grab your cell phone and then put your website in and just look at what your website looks like above the fold. So just what it looks like on a mobile device. Click around, you know, fill out a form. Um, but really that above the fold look will tell you whether or not your marketing agency is paying attention to your biggest pool of clients, which is people on their mobile devices. So cool. those are my tips. All right. So if anybody wants to get in contact with you, how could they do that? Uh, well, our website's Christy Jane, um, and that's just K-R-I-S-T-I and then Jane. Dot com, but and you can get a hold of me anytime um, at Christy at ChristyJane.com. That's my direct email address. Um, I did share those contact information uh, with your team. So, but it'll yeah, be on the notes. it'll be on the notes. Yeah. So I'm happy to talk about, you know, website, marketing, any of that stuff. And also, if you're interested in Roadproof, uh, I'm available for a demo as well. So cool. Cool. No, this has been great. This has been great. I, uh, I love to ask questions and you do a really good job answering them, so.
I spent most of my career teaching, so I'm happy to be here anytime. I and I'm like a, such a big fan of you guys. You do such a good job, and your podcast. You've really um, put a lot of really smart people out there teaching a lot of really great things. So I admit to being one of your followers. Well, thank you, thank you. All right. Until next time, this is Ken Hardison, dedicated to your success. You have been listening to the Grow Your Law Firm podcast, the podcast that leads lawyers to more growth, profit, and freedom. Go to growyourlawfirm.com to find more ways to market and manage your law firm. Please leave us a rating and review wherever you listen to your podcasts.